All right, Mike, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's great to have you. So for those of you listening who haven't met Mike yet, Mike Matthews is the best-selling author of more than a dozen books, including Bigger, Leaner, Stronger for Men and Thinner, Leaner, Stronger for Women. He blogs at muscleforlife.com and legionathletics.com with over a million visitors every single month. Mike, it's great to have you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about your background, how you got started as a blogger and author. Um, well, uh, I wrote Bigger, Leaner, Stronger initially. Uh, I mean, I just, I just wrote it kind of in, that was the, that was my initial foray into the, into the health and fitness space. And I wrote it and I published it back in uh, January of 2012, I think it was. And at that time I had a company and what we did is we created employee training programs randomly enough. Uh, mainly for healthcare professionals. We, we, we had done projects in a lot of different industries, but then kind of just, I don't know, got found our way more and more into uh, working with physical therapists and dentists and doctors and stuff. And um, <clears throat> so I had experience uh, breaking down, I mean, in this case, it was jobs. So like, okay, so, you know, they need, tra they need training materials to teach people to do this job. They have these people that do the job well, that have years of knowledge up in their heads and they, they've, they've figured out a lot of things that just haven't been codified. I need to extract that information and then put it in a lay it out in a way that, that anybody could, uh, or just about anybody could, could go through and understand and get up to speed and, you know, be a valuable employee. Um, so I had a, quite a bit of experience doing that and which really was just kind of boils down to doing good research and, um, you know, sorting out information, uh, intelligently and deciding what are the, what are the, what are the things you really need to know? And what are the things that maybe aren't so important and how do we, and then communicating them in a way that people can understand and blah, blah, blah. So, um, you know, that, that, that company actually still exists. I don't really have anything to do with it now. Uh, my brother just kind of takes care of it. And, um, you know, so now I do this, but at the, at the time I was, uh, interested in, in writing and my initial interest actually was, was fiction writing, like, like writing novels and which is something that uh, I'm still interested in. I'm working on. It's just, I only have maybe five or six hours a week amongst everything else to, to work on this uh, fiction project. So at this point it's almost just like a hobby, but, um, <clears throat> it's something I, I, I want to get the first project done this year and in the future I'll be doing a lot more of that. Um, but you know, I'm doing what I'm doing right now. So, uh, the reason why I, wrote a fitness book initially was so this was like in 2012 this is when amazon's kdp was uh I, I initially heard about it because that dude john locke had, was like the first guy to sell a million books or something on kdp and um and that's and i it just kind of caught my attention and i at that point you know was already interested in writing and i figured that I, i'm uh i mean I've, I've gotten better over the years but even at the time at the time I was a decent marketer just because I had, I had uh, experience selling information products uh, mainly through this previous business because although we were selling a service, uh, we also sold a lot of these courses to individuals as well because there were a lot of people that are, were then, you know, it was almost like there were templates of, of, uh, tra of trainings that you could that apply like that, you know, oh, that's a really good for a dentist office for the scheduler. <clears throat> that's a really good course that teaches you how to be a good scheduler. And then, oh, now other dentist offices want to buy it as well and blah, blah, blah. So I figured that um, I can I can do the, the business and marketing side of selling books. That's easy. Uh, so I'll just write it and put it up and not waste my time trying to get an agent and going after publishers. And it's just, just kind of an experiment. Let's see if anybody even cares what I have to say. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I, I did that and uh, that was in 2012. And initially, I think Bigger, Leaner, Stronger sold maybe, I don't know, 20 copies in the first month or something. It was irrelevant. But I was just like, oh, that's cool. Somebody bought it. Um, and, and then maybe it was 40 copies the next month and, and that it kind of grew exponentially. And uh, I started getting emails from people that liked it and had questions. And so it started to become a thing. And I worked and I started on another book. And again, that was just kind of a nights, nights and weekends type project, these, these uh, health and fitness books. Um, Cause I had to do it just in addition to everything else. And um, so then by the end of 2012, sales were at a point where I was like, this is something real and something that I enjoy more than I, the previous business, my previous work, I enjoyed it for what it was, but I knew it wasn't what, it just wasn't like my, something I was particularly passionate about. Um, I enjoyed writing books and more than I writing employee training stuff. Um, and you know, also I, I obviously have a passion for, for health and fitness 
And uh, <clears throat> so by the end of 2012, it was just clear that like this is this is real. And um, you know, I was making more money from that than I was from the other thing. And I was like, well, I, I, I'm gonna go in this direction. And actually initially, I was thinking to start a publishing company as opposed to just writing more stuff and being this fitness guy. Um, because initially I actually didn't really want to become a fitness expert or guru or whatever. Um, it was, I mean, I enjoyed the writing of it, but it just, I, I was interested in, in taking what I learned in building up my book sales and just applying it to other people's books and being a publisher because, and there's still, there's still, the opportunity is still there. I knew there was an opportunity then. There's still an opportunity now because a lot of the big publishing houses, they're just so far behind in terms of marketing. It's a joke. Like they have distribution. That's what they have. They're not good marketers at all, um, especially not good internet marketers. They're awful actually. Um, so there are, I just knew that like I could do such a better job and I could sell so many more books, especially for uh, authors that big publishers wouldn't really bother with, or if they could get a deal, it'd be a shit deal that, you know, that they're just, it's going to be a, probably a one book shit deal. That's not going to go well for them. And, um, and then also helping authors understand what it takes to sell books, um, which big publishers, they don't sound like they have, oh, okay, here's what you got to do. And here's how it really works and whatever. So, um, I, recruited my 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 best friend his name's jeremy i recruited him initially like hey let's do this together um because he was in a similar position he was working in a, in a company that his family owns which ironically consults and trains dentists and so they actually had used some of my materials and he didn't is again he he was doing it and it was fine but it wasn't something that it's not like he wanted to try to take over that company or it just he wasn't passionate about it um and so we then initially started going down that road of starting this publishing company, got a website put up, name, blah, 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 started putting together our plan. But then in that time, the fitness stuff just kept on growing so quickly where then we just kind of looked at it and said, well, this is a much like we, in terms of opportunity, the fitness stuff is way better. And we'll probably have more fun because it's gonna be way easier because we have so much momentum. And there's a lot more money in it, so let's just do that. And uh, so that was 2013. We started working on what the website Muscle for Life, which launched in March of 2013. And uh, since then, you know, we've I've launched more books. I've launched revised second editions of books. Um, uh, we've launched a, a supplement company called Legion, which is also growing absurdly quickly. Um, and I'm doing an app and um, more books and blah, blah, blah. So that's kind of a long story short. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I mean, you've got like so much stuff going on in, so in, in just, a, a, you know, only been like three years since you published that first book. Um, you know, what do you think has led to so, so much success that you've had so far? Um, well, I mean, there's, there's just the standard of like, we work a lot. I mean, that's been, cause I ask sometimes like, so like what were your biggest challenges? Uh, we started out, um, obviously, like I said, there was a lot of momentum with Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, that book, it, it, it was unique when I published it. And now there, there have been quite a few knockoffs and quite a few people that have just tried to write like, oh, I can do that as if it's that easy. It's just, oh, I, I, can, I can do a me too. I can write a book like that. Um, but you know, when I first published it, there was, that's why I wrote it. Cause I saw that there was a, I was like, why is there no book in this space that actually just isn't, isn't just marketing bullshit and, and teaches you the real science-based fundamentals of dieting and energy balance and macronutrient balance and how does it really work? And, and then in terms of training, the importance of heavy weightlifting and, you know, you don't have to sit in the gym for two hours a day and what exercises are going to give you the most bang for your, for your buck, so to speak, and so forth. So at the time there was no book like that. So I saw that and I wrote that book and now it's sold I don't know, close to 500,000 copies in the last few years. Um, and so subsequently, a lot of people have tried to also publish kind of just very similar books that haven't really gone anywhere for them because my book is there and it, and it has 2,100 reviews and Amazon, it's so entrenched in Amazon's algorithms and everyone talks about it. And so, you know, people coming into the space now, if I like, if I were, you know, working on, uh, if I were to write another book, which right now I'm working on some cookbooks. So those are, it's almost like line extension. It's not a whole brand new thing, but I, uh, I do have some ideas on what the next like actual standalone books are going to be. And again, the idea is 
that is not just like, oh, well, that one book is selling well and I can just kind of spin my own version of that. No, what's a real need? What's something missing in the marketplace that people want to know about and uh, you know would talk about if it were there? So there's that, um, and that's just like again, smart marketing really is, is some, doing something that is uh, is unique and that that has a USP that isn't just well, you know, uh, hey, I'm here too, uh, as opposed to I have something unique to offer, and uh, and and then and then. Um, you know, the fact that also that I walk the walk, that I am in, I have the type of physique that most guys want. Uh, and, and I say that, and that might seem stupid that I even have to say that, but you might be surprised how many people are in this space writing and creating videos and creating content that kind of just look like shit. Like why, why would anybody want to listen to that person? It'd be like, I mean, if we take, if we take the physical physicality out of it, if we say, okay, uh, this person's gonna write a book on how to play tennis or, or create videos on how to play tennis, but they suck at tennis, then who cares what they have to say? Um, so, I mean, that definitely had something to do with it. And then there's just just hard work. I mean, uh, for since the beginning now, I, I probably average maybe 60 hours a week of, of work and real work, not like, oh, I'm on Facebook every two minutes and like I am particularly, I'm good at just, going full introvert focus mode and just disappearing into my work for hours at a time. So, um, <clears throat> you know, whatever, just a shitload of work between me and Jeremy and I have a team of people. There's 10 of us. It's not just me. Um, and everybody works really hard and everybody cares. And we have a very good, uh, culture here at the office. Um, so there's been that recruiting well, like recruiting for culture fit and recruiting people that are, <clears throat> are willing to work hard and, um, paying them well. And, you know, we have a lot of cool incentives and it's a fun place to work. Um, so, you know, we get, I, I honestly think that our team of 10 <clears throat> gets done the work of honestly, probably like a team of 30 people of just like your average kind of workplace with the amount of actual work that gets done. You know, I saw a survey done. It was, uh, <clears throat> it was like, I don't know, I saw it a couple of years ago. Uh, maybe it wasn't that long, maybe it was a year ago that like the actual amount of work that the average person does a, a day is like three or four hours. Uh, when, you, when, you, when you subtract all the just social media and just hanging out and talking and who knows what else. Um, so, you know, we are very different in that we work very hard and, um, you, you know, everything, go, every, and everyone's rewarded for it. So there's that. And, um, and then also just, being, uh, I mean, I guess um, just just being deliberate in 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 our actions, and also initially in our planning and how we've gone about things, um, and not assuming like that it's that you take take the supplement company. So we we're in a position where now, okay, selling a lot of books, getting a lot of visitors to to um, at that time it was just Muscle for Life. Uh, <clears throat> what supplements are an obvious. Uh, product that we could make that people would buy. Um, but, and a, and a lot of people have done that in this space. I see every week some new fitness personality is, is coming out with a supplement. But what uh, most people do is they just create me too bullshit supplements. They just, you know, the stuff that you find in GNC is trash, generally speaking, because you can't, <clears throat> the retail model means that you have to produce products for about a tenth maybe an eighth if you're really generous, but generally a tenth of what they cost in the store. So that pre-workout that you just spent $40 on actually costs $4 at most. And I would say $6 would be like, ooh, you know, they're really, really spending a lot, but it's more like three to $4 in general <clears throat> to make. And that's just how retail works. I mean, th that shirt you're wearing, the same thing. You know that, you know, whatever you paid for it, it costs them a t about a tenth, maybe even a 15th or a 20th uh, to make it, but you don't care. You're still going to buy the shirt because you bought it for the reason that, that you bought it. If you liked how it fit or it just whatever, you bought it. Um, Definitely not going to make it myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, and, it, and it's a shirt. It's not being sold like it's going to change your life. Supplements are different. Supplements, they're not sold like, well, hey, this supplement kind of sucks. It's nothing really special because we didn't spend any money on it, um, but maybe you'll like it a little bit, want to yeah. buy it. You know, it's I mean? like it's the hugest muscles ever, like yeah. big letters on the front, yeah, and, and the biggest dick ever, and you're going to be the biggest alpha male ever, and right. So, um, you know, so that's that's kind of the supplement game. Now we could have done that, and we could have like from a from a purely just being greedy. If we were just like oh greedy capitalists, then we would have done that. We would have said 
who cares? We'll sell direct consumer. We don't even have to go to retail because we have such a presence online and we have such a good ecosystem that we can use to promote things. Let's make a pre-workout for $3 and sell it for $40 and buy Lambos tomorrow. Um, but we decided to not do that. And we decided to offer something actually unique, um, which is, I mean, we spend on average probably four times as much uh, producing our products, just one for one, any of these products that we have, and some of them are quite expensive. Um, <clears throat> so then they're, they're more along the line. You'll see that, you'll see products like that more in the in the in the medical space you'll see certain supplements that doctors uh will give uh patients and that, that are very expensive or they'll recommend the patients and ours are of that quality but not as expensive so like you know there are some companies out there that make very high-end stuff similar to ours and by that i mean like the ingredients are backed by good scientific research not rat research not you know, AIDS patient research, not misinterpreted or mis uh, misrepresented research. And of course, we're very transparent. We're with, with all the research. Here's, here is what this ingredient is. Here's what it does in the body. Here's the research to support these mechanisms and, and these claims of benefits. And here are the actual papers. You can look at them for yourself. And, uh, and you know, it's more, edu more a, a process of education than it is, you know, just being a carnival barker getting up there saying, hey, 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 buy my shit, buy my shit. Um, so people, that's how we decided to go about the, you know, the, the supplement game. And that was in the beginning. And, um, you know, big surprise, it worked really well. So there's also that, I guess there's something to be said for that. And like, before we've really committed to anything, we make sure that there's a real need that we can fill in the marketplace <clears throat> and that we do it in, in a way that's in keeping with our integrity, I guess you could say. And it was just like in the beginning, this is a good example. We we're like, we don't have to just rip people off. We can actually do this ethically and sell them honestly and still make good money. Yeah, why don't we just do that? As opposed to, well, we could make more money if we were just scum. Well, yeah, okay. But there's a point where what does more money even mean? I mean, the diminishing returns with money uh, everyone talks about it in, you know, but it, it's, it's, it's real. Like there's a point where the problem is you, you have trouble falling asleep at night because you're constantly trying to tell yourself that you're not a bad person or you're trying to numb it with all your millions of dollars that you just are defrauding people out of. So I would rather just make less money per sale and feel good about myself, which is <laughs> these days something special which is just kind of a sad indictment of our society but yeah well, i mean totally agree with you man and i think that's definitely one of the reasons that's contributed to a lot of your success and uh yeah man it's, it's great to hear you say that i think a lot i think a lot more entrepreneurs especially entrepreneurs like of our generation are starting to feel that way like we, yes. you know like we got burned out of corporate america we're like you know we saw what, what was going on with wall street like that's yep. just we, like, we don't want to screw people over in order yeah. to make living like we can actually help people make the world a better place and make a good living at the same time totally so, and and you know if you're, if you're if you're familiar with uh oh is it is it abraham maslow you know maslow's uh hierarchy of needs i think it was abraham maslow so a psychologist um you know he was very pro-business and pro-capitalism as a force for good uh in in this stuff like kind of what we're talking about that you know, we can use this as an engine of of uh, improvement in, in the people, not just the people that work in the business, which is we're very much about here, the people that work with me, um, but just in general, like in, you know, you don't, you don't have to, sure, you, it's, it, you can, you could be, uh, you can go back to like the turn of the century type capitalist, the robber baron age where people were being worked to death in coal mines just so some asshole can make another, you know, his next million dollars on top of his hundred billion dollars or whatever. Uh, or or there, we can we can choose a more conscious type of capitalism. Um, and I think that, like you said, I think we're seeing more and more of that in, in the younger generations, the upcoming, excluding the, you know, elements of society that don't want to do anything, but you know, whatever, you'll always have that. Yeah. Yeah, man. So I want to pick your brain a little bit. because we know we've only got a little bit of time left, but you know, you've had so much success on Amazon specifically. And really, I mean, when you launched your book, like you didn't even have a blog or anything. So, um, you know, I didn't, I actually didn't do anything for it initially. I just put it up. I was just like, eh. right. Yeah. I mean, that's how I was when I first started too. But, um, but I mean, you mentioned, you know, you wanted to start a publishing company. 
And so I really want to get your insights into publishing and marketing. You talk about you know, the big publishers, they don't do marketing. They don't understand online marketing, especially. So, you know, when it, if, let's say you're going to launch a new book next week. What is the process that you go through, you know, to do your market research and then positioning and your marketing and promotion on that book? Um, well, I mean, if I, obviously I know I have cheat codes now because just, you know, I'm, I, I spend quite a bit of time every day answering emails still and answering messages and social media stuff and whatever. So I have my finger on the pulse of the people that I talk to and really understand who I'm talking to. Um, but again, there's that point first, that point of, uh, and I, and I, I have a couple ideas. I know like I have books that if I don't, if someone beats me to them, they're going to do well, basically. But there's the point of offering something unique, and this is this is especially important in the in the how to, you know, if you're going to try to write a how to book, and if it's a competitive field like fitness, um, which if you're trying to write in a field that's not competitive, why are you even bothering? Because no competition means no money generally. Um, you need to. Uh, make sure that you have something truly unique to offer that you're not just aping somebody else's work because it just doesn't do well. It might, it might, it might do, you know, it might work in if you're writing like, you know, romance novels or something where it's just, again, it's, obviously there's a, there's, um, there's, there's a bit of a formulaic approach to writing anything, but I can say just cause I've seen it in the fitness space where just me too fitness books do not do well. So first would be, what is something unique that I can create? Because, I mean, as you know, what really drives book sales is word of mouth, not fancy marketing. Uh, a good title and a good cover and, and making sure that you have reviews, uh, of course, matters. But ultimately, what matters most is word of mouth. And, and you create good word of mouth by writing a good book. So, and I've said this to, you know, I've done little interviews like this here and there. And my general advice to people that, you know, want to write uh, is if you can't, uh, it's one, it's not easy. It's a lot of work and it's something that, I mean, I personally am continually studying. I mean, I, I consider myself a competent writer. I don't think I'm a great writer. Um, and I'm, I mean, I write probably 10 to 15,000 words a week from between muscle for life and Legion. And, and then I'm working on fiction stuff as well. So I'm, I, I do a lot of it and I also read a lot. I've, I've read, I don't even know how many books now on writing and I'm continually reading myself, not just on writing, but I kind of like to read broadly. I, I read through like kind of a rotation of topics of types of books, mm -hmm. ranging from marketing and business stuff to history and biographical to uh, self help, self development or, or art, creativity, writing, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's just constant work. And it's something you have to really enjoy the process of, uh, in my opinion, uh, which is out of all the work that I do, writing is my favorite activity. So I, I even, even if I'm writing about something that is I've already written about a lot and it's not the most exciting article or whatever to write, um, but I'm writing it for a reason. Usually it'd be an SEO reason. Like I want to rank, I want to take the top position for this, this group of uh, keywords uh, or key for, you know, yeah, where just keywords or keyword phrases. And that's why I'm writing this article. All right, fine. So then I'll just get into it and, and give it my, give it my best. But, um, so, you know, you have to really enjoy it because if, if the stuff that, that, uh, if, if, if I couldn't write things that people talked about and, um, you know, emailed around and said, oh, this is a great article. You got to check this out and share around on social media and engage with, like if, if each of my articles would get shit for shares and shit for engagement, um, I, I would just wouldn't do it because I know that, you know, if that, if that's the kind of content that you're going to produce, then that's a different game. Like I know you can pay to get that kind of content produced and then you're just playing a Google game and that is a game. You need a lot of money to play that game because you need to be able to buy tons of links and you need to be, know how to do that correctly so you don't just get slapped. There's just, that's a different game. If you want to be the creative person, if you want to be the writer, then you need to be able to write stuff that people talk about and that's what we're working towards. So, you know, <clears throat> um, so, there, so, the, so there's that and if you don't truly enjoy writing and if you can't be, be enthusiastic and excited, then that's going to come across for the reader. Like you can, you can bet that the emotions that you're feeling, if you're just sitting there in boredom writing whatever it is you're writing, chances are the people reading it are going to be bored as well and they're just going to whatever. But, but if you can, you know, be a little bit enthusiastic and be really interested in what you're writing, then you can produce that, 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 um, those emotions in other people. 
Uh, so, so that's uh, on the content creation side. On the marketing side, title super important. I'm very much, um, I love the subject of branding and, and just the psychology of selling and the psychology of marketing. I think they're very, very fascinating subjects. I've read, I don't know how many books on on those. I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't even know, 100 plus. And um, I'm, I, that's something I continually am studying on because you can pick up, especially now being in the position that I'm in, one good idea could be worth a million dollars. Like, oh, we'll just do that and that's another million dollars. Yeah, cool. Um, so there's also a financial incentive there, but I, but before I was in that position, I still was very into just understanding how to sell and how to, because it's very, there are uh, so many little subtle uh, decisions and thoughts and whatever that go into you know, a person's decision, just purchase, just purchase your book from Amazon, um, you know, versus adding it to, to, to the wish list, maybe for later versus passing over it or whatever. And, um, so titles super important. There are so many books out there that just have awful titles that don't, you know, evoke any sort of curiosity that don't promise any sort of benefit, um, that don't give you any idea. I mean, I'm speaking now more from a, from a information like how to, uh, I'd say for, for fiction, there's definitely overlap there, but it's different. It's, it's different. You're going to be, a, you, you maybe you can probably be a bit more, uh, creative with your fiction titles, um, and get away with it as opposed to, you know, <clears throat> how to books. And, and that also applies to Legion. I mean, I, I, come up with, um, Jeremy's involved, my business partner, Jeremy, and he's my partner in everything now. Um, and he's over all the marketing and, and, and he's very good at it. Uh, but I'd say where I'm particularly good is I, I, I'm very good at, I, I write all of our copy. And so that also kind of includes coming up with product names and company names and book titles and blah, blah, blah. So, um, I don't have a, per, I don't, I, I never really, I don't know if I ever really found a book on this subject in particular of like book titles, but branding in general <clears throat> is kind of just what applies. And, um, you know, take, take bigger, leaner, stronger. I've seen that now, like Charles was Charles Duhigg or something, you know, the dude, uh, the power of habit, dude, yeah, power of habit, yeah. his new book is like better, faster, uh, smarter or something like that. And then there was another, then I saw there was some other sports book, higher, stronger, faster, some, some shit like that. And, uh, you know, and, and I, I like to think that maybe, I mean, bigger than stronger. If if anyone does any sort of research in the health, if you poke around the health, mind, and body section of Amazon, you're going to run into bigger than stronger. Because so I have ads everywhere. I'm on also bought lists everywhere. You're going to see it. So I don't know. I don't really give a shit. I'm not a person like I'm not a. I'm, I'm really not a narcissist. Like I'll oh, look at what I've done. Um, but I like to think that maybe whoever thought of those names uh, got inspiration from from bigger than stronger. Um, but I, I like that title a lot. The reason why I bring that up is because one, um, it's it's simple. It's just three words, and you have the the repetition of of the the, the syllables, which is cool. And it also though is the three biggest benefits that guys want. That's why they didn't. That's why they get into the gym. They want to get bigger. They want to get leaner. And they want to get stronger. And it's, so it's the simplest encapsulation of the USP of this book. This is what this book is going to give you. You're going to get bigger, leaner, stronger, and that's. That's it, I and mean, that's what you want too. Those are if you were to say, what are your top three things that you want out of the gym? I want to be bigger. I want to have bigger muscles. I want to have less body fat, be leaner, and I want to be strong. Like you know what I mean. So, um, I do a lot of. I, I treat. I just take naming things uh, very seriously because first impressions are so so important in marketing. I remember there was one study, random, but but one study that. I had seen that um, people form their first impression on it was on websites within like a half a second, basically. It was like a third of a second or a half a second. A person has already decided, they've already made a first impression. Your website has already uh, made a first impression on them and they have formed a judgment of your website that quickly. And the judgment that they form is going to color all their interactions on your website. So if the first impression is good, then everything subsequently is going to benefit from that everything they do on the website so even things they might not like so much are not going to be so bad and so forth and on the flip side if it's a negative first impression then everything that they do on your website is going to lose it's going to be you know, lose points just 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 automatically and i think that applies to really anything that applies to and that's also why like we put um we recently launched a new 
whole revamped uh, version of our of Legion Athletics, and now we're doing the same for Muscle for Life. It's not out yet, but we're doing it. Um, and the new the new website design. I mean, it wasn't just in a new website design. This was like probably the whole project, six months of work, and three hundred thousand dollars would be my guess. And that's actually a good price. Like that should have probably cost closer to a million dollars to put that website together, at least 700,000. Um, but we have awesome devs that we have on retainer and they're able, they're, they're willing to, to, you know, they, I mean, obviously they get paid well, but they're willing to, we would have had to pay more if we would have went to a real high end firm. Um, so we kind of like, I was lucky in a sense. Um, but we, we, we did that because we wanted to create, um, is good of a customer experience as we can and, and visitor experience as we can and really have something that is that makes you go wow when you go to it and we like to think that we've got there we've gotten there gotten close to that at least the website um, has gotten a ton of good feedback and what re website revenue has quadrupled on in, in terms of daily uh, averages since that website has gone up and we've had some new products and it's not just the new website that, that did that um, but so I, I apply that kind of uh, attention to detail with naming anything, with naming products, with naming books, um, naming services. I, I really try to think with um, explicit meanings, connotations, um, you know, an interesting example of this. So we also survey a lot, which is very important. Do not just pick things that you think are great because what you think is great doesn't matter. It's what everybody else thinks is great. So if you love a book title or you love a, a, a certain look of a product or whatever, uh, that's good, good for you, but some all your customers might hate it, or let's say 80% of your customers, potential customers might hate it. And we've run into that multiple times. A good example is there was a product, uh, I'm trying to remember, I think it's a joint product actually, and we were surveying the name. I personally really liked Halo. I like words that are evocative. I like words that have good explicit meanings and then have uh, you know, good connotations and, and have good emotions connected to them. So Halo, I like the word. It sounds cool. It's two syllables. It's short. To me, it, it, it uh, connotates protection. It connotates um, maybe even a, even a heavenly or a godliness or something like that. And um, so I thought it was cool. And I, I don't associate it negatively in terms of religion or anything. I'm not like some raging atheist or something. It's all oh, fucking Halos. Um, so but I, I surveyed, uh, you know, that plus a bunch of other uh, names, and and Halo surveyed out of a we we for names. What we do is we ask people to rate them on a scale of one to five. One being I, I hate it, five being I love it, and then we just take averages. And we generally like to see. We never will go with something that averages lower than a three. We like if something is a four plus, that's pretty much a winner. Like that's you know that means that a lot of people really like it. So Halo averaged out at like two. And we were like, what, really? Even Jeremy thought, like, we thought Halo was gonna win for sure. Like to, uh, but we looked at all the, and then we also asked, hey, you know, do you have any comments and suggestions? And so we started looking in those for each, for each title that, or each name that we survey. And um, they didn't like that it had the most common thing. The reason why they didn't like it was religious. Uh, they, they, it reminded them of religion. It was like, shit. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have thought of that. I, I, I thought it's great. I don't, I personally didn't even, my initial, my, my connection is, is, is just protection, like a halo. It's something that protects you, um, or the halo effect, you know, in marketing or whatever. I didn't even think necessarily religion right off the bat. But, um, so there's an example though, if I would have just went with what I thought was great, uh, I would have picked a name that a lot of my customers immediately turns them off. And that is the, the, that those effects can be more, um, profound than people realize that the difference between having a, a title, like for instance, my pre-workout is, is called Pulse. And I came up with that and um, and people love that name. It, I think that's like our highest surveying name ever, or title or whatever product name. Uh, it was like, I think it averaged like four or five. So like just basically everyone loved it. Yeah, it's a great name, it's a great name. And so the fact that, you know, when, when somebody first sees this product, Pulse, or even they hear about it, Pulse, and the fact that if it just gets them a little, even if it's just a little squirt of dopamine or whatever, they're like, ooh, I like that, like Pulse, that, that sounds good, that matters. And then again, because that that colors every further interaction now. Like they hit the page, they pulse. It looks really nice. Uh, the page looks nice. It's super professional. The the bottle looks great, and that is it makes them much more likely to purchase that product uh, than if it was called Halo and if it was an ugly package, an ugly website. I mean, it's just 
again, these things seem obvious, but they get violated. These principles get violated so much in the supplement space and in every in every industry, really. Um, so, you know, and then ironically, so now talking about Halo, so our greens product is called Genesis. And I thought Genesis, there's no way I wanted to call it evergreen because what a great, what a great word. I mean, it's, it's, it's two syllable or not two syllables, multiple syllables, but, uh, you know, three syllables, but I don't like long multi-syllabic words because they just, it, it gets caught in your tongue. And I like simple, like one to two syllable words. Um, but I'm fine with, with a three. And I thought the meaning is perfect. Like it has green in it. It's a green supplement. You know, it helps you improve your longevity. Evergreen has got to be the winner, right? And uh, Genesis Evergreen was, it didn't do very well. And Genesis averaged out at like 4.2. And, uh, and I was like, Genesis, you're, you don't like Halo and because of religious connotations, but Genesis you like? And I was like, what does that mean? But people love it. And, uh, you know, that was, again, that was one of our best surveying names. And um, so, you know, with the joint product, the, the, the name that surveyed best that we went with is Fortify. And to me, Fortify is so whatever. I mean, yeah, okay, it's three syllables, but it's a simple word. And the, the explicit and connotative meanings are fitting. But for me, Fortify is blah. Like, I don't get an emotional reaction from Fortify. I just like, yeah, sure, whatever, that's cool. But people like it and, you know, it sells like crazy. So that's just, um, and so I, I would survey everything. I'd survey book titles, I'd survey anything that you can survey where you're like, um, especially marketing related, survey covers, you know, get multiple, use 99 designs or something like that to, I mean, I, I personally, I, I used to use 99 designs back in the day for certain things, but um, I found that the the quality of the work just got worse and worse. Um, we, we, we used to use it actually for Legion when we were trying to come up with some different ideas for supplement pa uh, package design. Um, so I would say, I mean, it's possible that you can get something good on 99 designs. You just have to be willing to pay enough money for it. If you put up some shitty contest that's going to pay nothing, you're not going to get good work. You have to be willing to pay a premium, in my opinion, to attract good designers. Um, but, you know, survey, survey everything you can because first impression is so important. And especially with book covers, you have to remember on Amazon, people don't see a big book cover. They see a little thumbnail. So, you know, so many book covers just look like shit in thumbnail. Like you don't even know what's going on. And, you know, you want, uh, I, I, I'm all, marketing is all about swipe, of course. It's about, you know, good marketers, what is it? Good marketers copy, great marketers steal or whatever. And that's very true. Um, so I, you know, for Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, my swipe for that was uh, Brad Thor. Like how he, his books, how his, how his covers look um, are, I, I like that bold, it's a bold color. Uh, it's a bold, the, the way that the, 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 his, his name is, you know, have, you have this cut out kind of text, it catches your eye. It's bold. And especially as a thumbnail, it looks good. Um, so that was, I had a few swipes that I liked, but that was the swipe that I liked the most. And so if you go look at Bigger Leaner Stronger and then go look at a Brad Thor book and you're like, oh yeah, look, it's the, <laughs> it's the Brad Thor cover in the fitness space. Yeah, um, I'm, so, looking at, I'm looking at it right now on Amazon and it's, it's, yeah, it's very similar yeah, uh, definitely your own unique spin on it, but yeah, that, that's awesome, man. That um, you know, I can tell you put like so much attention to detail in the stuff, like the, the titles, the names, the branding, the images, the designs, and I think that is so important. I think you know a lot of people, you know, they think marketing is all about you know the newest strategy for SEO or yeah. the, the best. And ad let me say there is no SEO strategy. Let me just say quickly because people are listening. If like talk about blogging, here's SEO strategy. Here's what Google wants. They want long form, 2000 plus word, well-written content. Their spiders can analyze the quality of writing. So if you're a bad writer, there's a good chance that their spider is going to know that and going to penalize you for it. So they want long form, well-written content that gets shared around. They've said that, uh, that they don't consider social shares as backlinks, but they do consider them as votes was the word. So they do pay attention to that that does get shared around and linked to on around the internet. Obviously that still matters, but, um, in terms of link building and all that bullshit, it doesn't work unless you, again, ha know the right people and are willing to spend a lot of money. Like forget about Fiverr, link wheels and all that shit. It doesn't work. None of that stuff works and all it's going to really do is get you penalized. So if you don't have tens of thousands of dollars a month, I'd say minimum is $10,000 a month. You have to be able to spend $10,000 a month on links and you have to know where to get them and how to do it or don't even bother. So don't even waste your time with that. Instead, just produce really good content. Spend that time and spend that money on just becoming a better writer and just writing a lot of good stuff. But uh, that's SEO is you need to know how to do basic keyword research, which if you need help on that, check out quicksprout.com. 
or neilpatel.com. Uh, Quicksprout is Neil's website and Neil is um, a friend of mine and uh, a very, very savvy marketer and great smart business person and just a good guy. He's just a good guy. Um, but he has put together so much free stuff. He, 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 he goes insane with content creation. Um, and in SEO is one of his specialties and really con conversion is really his thing. Um, but he's also very, very good and very knowledgeable with SEO. And he talks about all different ways. Also going back to link building that you could do it if you're willing to do the legwork, if you don't have the money, see the thing is like the money pays for the legwork, uh, but you can do the legwork but you have to understand how to do it right and that it is very time intensive. So um, I would I would recommend that dive into Neil's stuff. So if you are going to spend your time writing and blogging, in my opinion, really know what you're doing and know why are you writing every article? Like, and how exactly uh, do you need to, what, what topics do you need to cover? And, um, you know, titles, talk about titles like headlines, blog headlines, super important. You wanna get very good at writing headlines. Um, so anyways, sorry to interrupt you, but I just want to say that on, on SEO is there are no gimmicks. There are no tricks that work. There just aren't. You have to be able to produce long form, well-written content that people share around. And if you have time or money, you can also go about, do the legwork of reaching out to websites and getting links in, in which Google sees that. Um, and obviously that matters, but, um, first and foremost, you have to have content that anyone would even want to link to. Yeah, totally. I mean, the same thing with books on Amazon. I mean, you don't want to just publish, like you said, me too books, just crap books. You want like really quality stuff that people are going to love and share with their friends and family. Yep. Yeah, totally. yeah it's, it's just not an easy, it's not like this is, you know, in the beginning, you know, there were people that were putting up all these PLR books and publishing th a thousand books and, you know, and then, oh, they made $20,000 a month with their thousand PLR books. Like who cares? That shit was going to, what is it last it's three months or something? And then Google or uh, then Amazon killed them all. So no, this, if you want to build a real sustainable business and a career and something that you can be doing 10 years from now, you're, it's, it's a lot. There are, there are no shortcuts. It's kind of like the, um, it reminds me of the Stockdale paradox. Have you ever heard about that? I think it was, his name is yeah. James, James Stockdale. He was, um, he was in Vietnam. He was a prisoner of war and he found that the people that, and he did a lot to, to help the prisoners and, and keep them, keep their morale up and keep their spirits up. But he found that the people that didn't make it, uh, were the people that kept on telling themselves that they were going to be out by Christmas and then Christmas would come and they were like, well, they're, they're going to be out by, you know, uh, you know, whatever this, this day, that day or whatever. And they, 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 they awesome. couldn't, they couldn't face the facts of reality that they probably weren't going to get out anytime soon, but while they're stuck in hell, you know, they can do things to make it less, uh, and, and still retain their dignity and whatever. So I think that's very applicable to life or if you, if someone's getting into something going, all, all I have to do is get this book, you know, just get in and I'll just, you know, I'll just get it published. And then in three months it's going to be selling. And you know, it's just that that person is very likely to fail. I mean, most businesses, they don't get really much of anywhere in their first five years. I mean, I think breaking, breaking even in your first three years is considered good. Five years is considered okay. And it takes 10 years on average to build anything that is, you know, worth anything. I get, you know, most businesses, they never even break a million dollars a month in revenue ever. It's like the percentage that do is like a 0.00001%. So, you know, taking a realistic view of the, of the runway that it, of success and how much time it takes and not necessarily, I mean, I, I feel like I got lucky in, in, in various ways that accelerated the process for me in addition to hard work and doing things that made sense and worked out, uh, there was definitely luck along the way. So I'm an outlier, but on average, you know, it, it could take 10 years to be where I'm at now. And I would still should be happy about that. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, that's a great point about like, like the stock tail paradox. Like you don't want to go into something that's going to be like a career for you and be like, Oh, I, once, once I get this book done in three months, you know, I'm, I'm set. Like, because yeah. You're totally selling yourself over disappointment or failure. And you're also not focused on what's really important, like you said, which is like creating great content, helping people, making a difference, making the world a better place. Yep. Versus just, you know, checking off a list on your to-do list of getting Yeah, and then checking your sales every day, like, oh come on, like when we got why I need more money. Yeah, it's totally irrelevant, right? Yeah. yeah. Customers yeah. don't care if you check your sales every day. It's not yeah, so yeah exactly. And I think there's also something to be said for when you do approach it from like, I'm just gonna be helpful and you know, and this is something that I say, but I feel like I've backed it up by like, for instance, from the beginning, and I still do it to today, 
I've, emailed, I've answered every email that I've been sent and I put my email address in my books. And at this point now I sell an average of about 30,000 books a month and my email address is in all of them. And that's not, a, that's excluding free books that I don't even know the tens of thousands a month in free books. Um, and my email address is in them. So, um, I guess, I, I mean, so a lot of those free books are ironically under a different pen name and it's a different project. So that for fitness books, I actually don't know what the monthly is on the freeze, but it's a lot. And so, uh, you know, I've answered everything myself and actually genuinely been helpful and not just tell people. And that was something that also that I saw kind of like when I was looking at the fitness space as a whole before I got into this, what are the big deficiencies? And there was, I saw deficiencies in terms of the books that were available in terms of the content on the internet that's available, supplements, but also just... Just in, I mean, this space is full of so many uh, just strange, narcissistic, uh, empty-headed people that are, are just terrible business people, terrible marketers, um, and also in many ways they're just like a, they're just the type, they're not people you want to be friends with. They remind me of like politicians, <laughs> like you know what I mean. They're just super into themselves, and they lie about not being on drugs, and they lie about this, and they lie all they care about, and they're, they're going to promote products they don't care about, and they're just not people that you, you that you'd really want to know or hang out with. And so when I was going into it, I was like, so okay, so if I just like in general, I'm a pretty sociable person. And if I just do that, and if I, you know, like for instance, a lot of people in the fitness space, if you were to email them a question, a yes or no question, that's all they'd have to say, yes or no, there's a fair chance that you're either not gonna get a reply at all, or the reply is going to be trying to sell you something. Maybe they'll say yes, but if they're gonna try to pitch you something. If you, if you email a more open-ended question that actually requires time to answer, very few are gonna even bother. Um, so I saw that as a, as a way that I can differentiate myself from everybody else in the field by actually just taking the time. And there's also no way to shortcut that. You have to, you know, yeah, I have good systems worked out uh, and I use the keyboard shortcuts in Gmail. I have this whole thing worked out and, and I type 100 whatever words a minute and okay, fine, but still I have to sit down and do it. And it's not something that I have to do, especially not now, but in the, that's something that I've kept in that is an example of like, just being helpful and not even asking people. The most I ask for is if someone read my book and they liked it and I can see that in an email, I ask if they could leave a review, a short, simple review on Amazon. Like I don't ask them to, I don't try to push them to go buy supplements. I don't try to push them to buy anything. And uh, it's just building goodwill. So even at the end of the day, if everything fell apart and somehow I you know, imploded everything and deleted everything from my life, at least I can say I helped a lot of people and that's worth something. And yeah, that, I, that sounds like I sound like a politician now, but you know, I'm, I, that matters to me. That actually is something that when I am answering those emails, if I spend three hours doing emails in a day, uh, that's not necessarily, sometimes I'm like, oh, cause I have a lot of stuff to do and I'm gonna do that as well. Uh, it's enjoyable to know, cause I remember what it was like to be that person and not have any idea how to set up a meal plan or you know why, why I couldn't lose weight or why I couldn't gain weight. And I remember how frustrating it was to try to read magazines and you go on the internet and it's the same thing. It's just a, you know, a free for all melee of gurus that are trying to push all kinds of shit. So I remember what that's like and it's nice to, you know, it feels like giving back in a sense, I guess, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely, man. That's, that's awesome, that's great. Well, so that's, that's my philosophy. Yeah, that's awesome, man. I, and I mean, I totally agree with you. I'm totally right on with you. And I think a lot of people listening to like totally gonna resonate with that. And it just, it just makes sense. You know, it just makes sense that, you know, the, the better quality stuff you put out, the more you help people, the more money you're going to make because people are going to, you know, people, when you respond to an email and not trying to pitch someone, they're naturally going to like tell their friends about you and exactly. send more traffic your way. And it's all about word of mouth. And, uh, you know, I think one of the great things that you've done, this is so apparent from this whole interview is that you just focus on the long term, right? Like, it wasn't about like how many books can I sell this month. It was like, you know, how great content can I, can I, you know, it's just, you're constantly focused on how good you can make your content, how many people you can help and the long-term effects of it, right? Not just trying to make as much money as you can this month, but uh, you know, creating like a legacy or an impact is really going to last. Yeah, and that's a good way of putting it. How I kind of put it is I, I, I try to think of it as I'm creating a body of work. I'm not just writing an article for the sake of writing an article. I mean, my articles are driven by SEO. Like if, if something has no SEO, let's say there's a question I get asked frequently that has no SEO value, I probably won't write an article on it, but I'll make a short YouTube video about it and I'll, and I'll talk about it. You know, that's a, that's a good way because articles, 
they take quite a bit of time and I put quite a bit of time in them on average, probably 10 hours per article. Um, and sometimes more depending on how long it is. Um, so I'm, I think about it though, in terms of not just I'm writing some article for Google, but I'm adding something to my body of work, so to speak. And I try to not have as not have a bunch of overlap between articles. And obviously because everything is written by me, it's not contradictory, which is another deficiency that I saw in the space is that a lot of these other content aggregation type websites, these big content websites as a, as a, as a, as a user, as a reader, and especially as someone that is is uh, new, you'll read one article that says you should do A, B, C, and then you'll read the next article that says A, B, and C don't work at all, and you should not do that. You should do, you know, D, E, F, and and the next one's going to contradict that. So uh -huh. it doesn't it, it doesn't help you. You're just you're just left like, well, what the fuck? Like, what, do, what do I do? You know what I mean? And, and each one is written by this person has this degree and that degree, and they and they're best selling this and that and other, and this person's a coach of this that and other, and you're like, okay, you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. So, so, so that's also, you know, something that uh, I, I try to, I try to look at it, you know, in the, um, that I'm trying to build, if I look at it, a mind map, it's, you know, there are a bunch of branches and it goes off all over the place. But when you look at the whole picture, it, it makes sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? Totally. Yeah. Well, I know you talked a lot about, you know, titles and headlines and, and blog titles, especially, and, and, you know, even when you started your blog, like back in 2012, like clickbait. It was it was a big thing, you know. All yeah. these and now, like on Facebook, and there's like websites like Viral Nova. Like all they do is just basically have these headlines that are just outrageous to get you to click on them. And it's is it's that, a thing. I mean, it's a business model. Is that is that what is that like the model that you follow? Though I mean, is that how you look at titles, or, or how do you look at getting like a great blog title that's going to get traffic and clicks? No, I don't. I don't like the clickbait. Like I want titles that look good for Google, and those Google does not like those titles. What they're going for those are for social. That's for social sharing, and it also it cheapens. If I were to do that, it would just cheapen my brand, and in a way, it would it would misrepresent the content because when you see like one of the, one of those lame clickbaity type of. Um, uh, uh, headlines, you know, you're expecting a certain type of content. You're not expecting a 3,000 word article that's well written, that's going to take a little bit of time and you have to think and actually understand it and whatever you're, th you're expecting like some, you know, 10 second YouTube clip that you're going to laugh at and then, you know, share on Facebook and move on with your life. Um, and so, and I think that we're going to see, I, don't, I actually don't really personally care where the clickbait, I don't, I don't know if it's going to decline or, or, or grow in popularity, but um, it has, it just doesn't have relevance to me. My, I'm, I, I would, yeah, I mean, really, I, I never really go for clickbaity type things. I'm going for just good, solid, you know, uh, direct mail type of uh, old school cop, uh, copy type of headlines um, that, you know, have uniqueness or curiosity or, or promise benefits or, you know, lists. Of course, lists always do well. That'll always do well, but you can do a list in a way that, uh, is clickbaity or is is um, promises a bit more value? Um, so I mean, obviously, there's a ton of information out there and writing good headlines. Again, I mean, Patel Neil Patel has good has a lot of good articles on his website. Um, what's the Ryan Dice Digital Marketer is another good resource for that. His his team, I mean, they're like they're just the gods of 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 converting paid traffic into sales. Um, I mean, I think in the in the last ten years that they've been around, or if it's been a little bit more, they've spent over a hundred million dollars on traffic. Like legit, this is also these are not like random internet scammers. Like Ryan Dice is a real dude, and he has real businesses, and uh, he's the real deal. So they have great they have great information. Um, there's another blog. God, it's it's, a, it's on my blog. Like I get I get their updates. What is it called? Uh, I, don't know, I don't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> uh, there are I don't follow that many blogs to be honest because majority of my reading is uh, books, and I find that to be far more valuable than blog articles. Um, just because I mean blog articles are fine for if I'm diving into something new and I want to get my feet wet and and you know get a uh, kind of fifty thousand foot view of the subject. But if I really want to dive in, I'm going to be looking for something more in depth. But um, yeah, so no, I don't, I don't go clickbait. I, I I do I do use um oh they, they have the headline analyzer do you know hold on i'll, I'll pull it up this is because I, I use this company's headline analyzer uh, and they also have a good blog code schedule yeah it's code schedule so codeschedule.com they have a good blog and their content you know they it's all high quality and it's all over the place 
because you know it's marketing, so a lot of things you can write about. Um, but they have a headline an analyzer that is good, and let me pull up uh, another one. Like I, when I, I want my headlines to be 70 plus on that. And sometimes I'll go with like a high 60s if I disagree with it basically, and I think that you know it's a good headline and it's going to work. But if you know, I at this point I don't even write things that are in the 50s. But I would never go something in the 50s. I like to see 70s and ideally high 70s in that. And then there's another good headline analyzer, advanced. If you Google advanced marketing institute headline analyzer, it'll come up. And uh, between those two, they, they have a percentage. I like to see 40% plus in the, uh, in, in the AMI analyzer and 70 plus, 70 points or whatever plus in the co-schedule. And, you know, I really like to see 50 plus in AMI and like high 70s or even 80s. It's hard to score 80s on the the, the co-schedule one, but I've, I've done it. It's just, you know, I don't know. It seems almost kind of fluky. But um, anyways, so I, I put a, a fair amount of time and thought into headlines and run a lot through those until uh, I get something that resonates with me and I know the crowd, I know the people that I'm writing to and um, scores well in, in those uh, tools. Awesome, man. That's great. Thanks for sharing those great tools with us. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, well, Mike, I mean, you shared tons of awesome information with us today. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, before you go, tell us what people find out more about you and the work that you're doing. Yeah, I mean, so right now, I mean, I, I kind of uh, have my, it's just I'm in a routine. So I write a lot for, for Muscle for Life and Legion and uh, do a lot of just content creation. I'm putting more time into YouTube. I do a podcast as well. Uh, I mean, everyone can find me at muscleforlife.com. It's kind of the central hub of everything. And then Legion is legionathletics.com. Um, but I'm working on, a, I'm updating, I'm doing a second edition of, uh, of one of my cookbooks, which is, I mean, as a quick little aside, um, this is an example of, I feel, something that is worth doing because it improves customer experience and improves the first impression that I can make with people. And that is, instead of, I could have just made a new cookbook and just made more money. Like, that's easy. Uh, I, can, I, I can make two book, cookbooks a year and just pump them out, which actually I want to do. But before I do that, I'm updating one of my cookbooks that sells very well already. So I could just say, hey, you know, it sells a ton of books. It makes a lot of money. I don't have to do anything with it. But it's not up to the standard now that I have set kind of for myself, um, for my work, and I want to improve it. So I've, you know, spent a lot of time producing a lot of new content for it. I tell, I've gotten suggestions, tons of suggestions from, from people since I first published it that I've tabulated, you know, tabulated in terms of a survey and, okay, what, what, what are the recipes people really like? What are the recipes that people think need work? What are the new type of recipes? What would they like to see? And da 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 da. And 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 let the people's actual suggestions guide all of my updates that I've done to this book, really. And spent um, I don't know tens of thousands of dollars already. In in I mean, by the time it's done, I don't even I don't know how much it's going to be. It, it maybe fifty thousand dollars or more just doing this update to produce this second edition of the book. Um, and I've done the same thing with Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, and Thinner, Leaner, Stronger, and a book that I have called Cardio Sucks. And, you know, again, it's a, it was, I mean, it, hundreds of hours of work. I could have written a new book. Like these other books I have in the back of my head that I could have just done one of those. But uh, I want to, I want people to be wowed by my work as much as then I'm, you know, as much as possible. So I've put a lot of time into, instead of writing new books, spending a lot of time, and in those cases, everything, a lot of money, upgrading the quality of work that I have to just further, you know, I look at it in terms of like, um, you know, chess, where if you take a position in chess, you want, you have to consolidate your position before you go on an offensive again. So same kind of concept where now I feel like I've taken a position, I have a beachhead here and we've kind of moved out and I want to make sure that I want to, I want to make, I want to strengthen that even more. So like when people read Bigger, Leaner, Stronger, they pay $9 or $10 for it on Kindle where they're just blown away, where they're like, I can't believe that this is a $10 book. And then they send me an email with some questions and get a response and they're like, and, I, and I'm not pushing them to buy anything. And uh, you know what I mean? It just, just that, that, that creates a, a wow effect. Um, so that's what I'm working on is uh, working on launching this, this new cookbook uh, or second edition of my, of my cookbook. And um, you know, I'm working on an app, which is a, a hilariously annoying project at this point. It was like a year ago. I was like, I want to do an app because there's a, same thought process applied to apps. There's a, there's, if it can be done well, there's a need for a really good weightlifting app. And 
there are a lot of deficiencies with the current apps and I, I don't know how to make apps, but I can just find a company that knows that and I can, you know, I, I know uh, how, I know some of the key features that would make this app stand out, so we could just do that. So like a year ago, I, I find a company, whatever, and I'm thinking like, you know, four, four months is kind of the estimation and maybe $60,000. I'm like, all right, that's cool. Uh, that, that sounds, that's, and I don't, it's not gonna require a ton of my time on top of everything else. So a year later now, that company, gave up actually on the project. They just gave me the code. They got like halfway through it and just gave me the code and they even missed out on the next payment. They they chose to just quit. I'm like, okay, find an, another company, uh, which I then had to go through. I, I, it was partially my fault. I didn't, I treated it a bit too nonchalantly. I didn't think, I thought like, this isn't a rocket. It's a fucking workout app. It's not that complicated. It's, it's data manipulation that looks pretty. Like, is it that hard to do? So I, that was my fault in not really trying, not approaching it like this is a whole new business and really being as detail oriented as I normally would be and even in vetting companies. I mean, I found a company that had a good portfolio and everything looked kind of good, but I normally would have been more anal and more skeptical and whatever. So then I find another company um, to, to do it. And so now we're, we're a year later, right? Cause there was a lot of like, it got delayed with this initial company and they gave up at like the eight month mark or nine month mark or blah, 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 whatever. And I kind of also, I've had so many things on my plate between sub the supplement business and everything else where I just like, well, if it's this, if this app is moving, then fine. If it's delayed, I don't really care. I'm not like, I just want it to be done. And so now with this new company, um, there's problems with their internal processes. They've built hundreds of apps, award-winning apps. You know, I'm like $200,000 deep in this thing now and now having problems with this company. So, <laughs> but I refuse to give up on this fucking thing just on principle. Like I, I gotta get my money back out of it, but still just on principle, it's like this cursed project. So I, I have an app coming that, uh, it's fine. Like this company's going to get it done. They're a good company. They have uh, very skilled developers. There was just a breakdown in the transfer of just in their own internal processes of determining exactly what needs to be done with the app. Cause especially cause half of it was already done. Um, so if you want to check out where at least what it's going to look like, uh, you can go to get stacked stacked is the name S T A C K E D get stacked app.com. Um, and you'll see a little bit about it there. So, um, you know, that, that's coming. So that's cool. And otherwise it's just kind of, you know, coming out with new supplements and researching new products and writing copy for new stuff that's coming out and blah, blah, blah. It's again, it's just kind of a, it's a daily routine, you know? Awesome, man. Well, thanks so much for sharing with, your wisdom with us, Mike. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been great.